Hello and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I would like to wish you all the very best for 2022. Thank you very much for engaging with the channel, for your comments, for liking and subscribing the videos. I'll keep making them if you keep watching them. Today is an unboxing video from an upcoming makeover here in the UK anyway, Reximex. And this is their latest offering, the Reximex Ixia. Now, straight away upon first glance, you could misconstrued this as uh, an offering from, say, FX, or even it looks very, very similar to Daystate's Delta Wolf. I suppose that's partly one of the reasons why I was very keen on uh, getting my hands on this rifle, because it has that tactical look and feel. And also, uh, I'm very, very keen to see what this rifle can do against my Delta Wolf and my FX Impact Mark II. This particular rifle is sub 12 foot pounds in 177, and I know you can also get the same rifle in sub 12 in 22 and also in FAC levels. So, what I'm going to do today is do a quick overview of what you get in the box. So, we'll have a quick look at uh, the, the first of all the uh, intro pack over here and the magazines and the instructions and whatnot, and then we'll take a closer overview of the rifle so you get my initial first impressions. So let's take a quick look at what you get in the bag. So upon first glance straight away, you can see the magazines there. Now, because this is the 177 version, you're going to get two 14-shot magazines over here, like this. And I'll tell you something about these mags, and from what I understand for, for, from loading this rifle and what I've seen already, um, this and it, from what you've seen of my other videos i i really am all about simplicity when it comes to magazines some of the best magazines i've seen are just rotational mags where you just literally drop the pellets in and you can even speed load those whereas ones where you have to potentially rotate a drum load it in backwards or load a pellet in reverse skirt and then start dropping them in as you rotate back i'm not a fan of those but what i what i do understand with this particular model is that you have to load the pellets in and then l turn this round and load it upside down from the left hand side into the right so uh, i'll be able to give more details on that once i've had a little bit ha of hands-on time with the rifle but you do get two 14 shot magazines we'll take a closer look what's in this bag as well you get a bunch of o-rings some allen keys you get the filling adapter and you also get a single shot tray now, the single shot trays are uh, definitely uh, interesting. Just a very quick overview about this is that as soon as you've loaded this, you drop the pellets in over here and they slide into the uh, the, the, the area of the breech where the, the, they get indexed. So essentially it's, it's drop and slide. It's a drop and slide as opposed to feeding them in. And then I've seen single shot trays with essentially um, pivot points which uh, hold sections which come out like this. You put the, the pellet in and then you feed it back in uh, and away you go. This is interesting in the fact that you just drop the pellets in and they slide in via that incline to where they're indexed into the barrel. Okay, so um, let's just pop this lot away and then we'll just take a closer look at the instruction manual. Now, I'm a fan of colour instruction manuals. I've seen some, even some Prestige makes take or sh scrimp on uh, the instructions. So considering that this is uh, a mid-tier rifle, I wouldn't say it's it's purely budget. Neither would I say it's a, it's a top tier in terms of over a £1,000. It came in just roughly under £700. This is, a, you know, it's it's what you would expect. You know, I'd I'd hope to get a good quality instruction booklet detailing everything I want to see, and this is what I'm getting. So, I'm seeing some nice color pictures over here. Some breakdowns, obviously, of stating the obvious in terms of loading and unloading, barrel placement. I mean, we'll when we get to uh, the schematics, we'll that's that's obviously a good area to, to ascertain the detail put into the instruction booklet itself. Um, over here, we've got a breakdown, very, very detailed breakdown of the, uh, the rifle itself over a number of different pages. There's the uh, air bottle sub-assembly. You get an aluminium bot bottle with this, and I know that you can get carbon fibre one. I'm just looking to find out um, 
when that will be available. And then we've got some additional images over here. This having a note section at the back of the instruction booklet. I don't understand why we put that in there. I've never used them before. Okay. You also get in the packet a bunch of targets over here like this. Just go ahead and drop those. And this is an interesting sheet. Let's just take a closer look at that. Okay, so this is uh, essentially the rifle being chronoed and it was done on the 4th of January and it shows the uh, feet per second and foot pound over 14 over 14 shots. So we can see an average of 782 uh, feet per second and in terms of power we're looking at roughly what 11.7 11.8 maybe. So that's what you would expect and I'd feel comfortable seeing that or those figures but I'm going to be trying this rifle out with a couple of different pellet types my uh, trusty JSB exacts 8.44s are going to come first um, and they're my benchmark pellets to go to and I'll try out the different skirts I've got available from 4.50 to 4.52 or even 3 and see I think 5.1s usually are a good benchmark to go with but let's see let's see how we get on and that is what you get in the bag, so to speak. And what we'll do now is we'll take a closer look at the rifle. Now, as I mentioned, the rifle itself, it's, it's, it's one of those that you either love these types of rifles or you don't. Sorry. There we go. Either this is for you or you're more traditionalist. Now, from my perspective, I'm a bit of both. I definitely love tactical look and feel of these these types of rifles now upon lifting the rifle first of all it's got some weight to it now straight away starting from the back let's have a look over here you've got an adjustable butt pad which can go up and down with a button which is nice rather than an allen key and when I had a quick look at this in the shop, it's not something that you can do very easily. It is, it is quite stiff, so you're going to have to rest the rifle somewhere and obviously position this with two hands. Then over here, you've got the power adjuster, and I think this adjusts the tension on the hammer spring. Uh, with a bit of investigation, I'll be able to confirm that in another video. Over here, you've got the port where you load your magazine. And again, this, I believe, loads from the left to the right you've also got another area over here where you can uh, adjust the power and as we move forward you've got the area where the plenum reside i believe you've got the regulator over here oh just very quickly i noticed this in in the shop too i really am not a big fan of positions such as these why don't manufacturers take a little bit of time and effort just to position these so they're essentially upright in in a really nice easily viewable position rather than one's facing this way and this one is facing this way so you have to rotate the, the rifle round like this to be able to see or or read the uh, essentially the regulator pressure and you have to rotate the rifle further to be able to see how much air is in the bottle so i'm not a big fan of that anyway as we move forward this is very interesting the safety catch now the safety on this is like unlike anything i've ever seen the safety on this is essentially part of the trigger guard now um let's 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 talk about it so to, to at the moment the rifle's in safe mode because as you can see here there's an s and an f up for safe down for uh fire when you want to fire this rifle you push this part of the trigger guard down and that is now in fire mode and if you want to obviously put it back into safe there you go so i find that very very different um in practice i wonder how it how it will how it will be and also if this has got any 
um, longevity, whether or not, obviously, the point of a trigger guard is exactly that, but coupling the safety with within the, the, the trigger guard itself, I don't know if, you know, obviously you're going to have to look after the rifle and make sure this doesn't take any hits and bangs, otherwise you're taking uh, some impact on, on the safety of the rifle. Uh, let's just quickly just go back again. Over here, you've got an AR style grip. It's got some really nice stippling to it. There is somewhere over here where you can obviously make an um, uh, feed in an Allen key if you want to take this off and replace it. You can, but I'll be honest with you, it looks like one whole piece. This is all one piece over here. So I don't think, unless you're looking to replace this entire section, you will be able to to do that. Interesting. So as we move forward, this is where you fill the rifle. It goes up to 250 bars, you can see. Again, you would think that the manufacturers will put some form of dust cover on here. So that's something I'm going to have to look at, which again, it's disappointing that they haven't done that. Further forward, we've got a Picatinny rail over here. And again, you can potentially remove it and add one of your own. However, I'd be looking to add another extension Picatinny rail onto here, which feeds under the bottle. And who knows, there may be other manufacturers' uh, products. I know that there are, for example, AGT create a bottle guard for their Oregons. And I'd be keen, because I've actually got an Oregon, I'll be able to tr try that by taking it off and putting it on here just to see visually what it looks like. Although I know that the bottles on the Oregons are a lot longer than this. So the capacity on this bottle is 425 cc. It's nice that it's got the produce date on there. As I mentioned, it's aluminium, so it adds to the weight, unfortunately. But as I mentioned, there may be an opportunity to get a carbon fiber bottle on here. Let's see. Uh, I forgot as well, sorry. We've got over here on the top a combination of Picatinny and Dove dovetail rail which i really really like although i don't think there is any moa on here um but still i like the fact that uh it is a combination of the two and again it's all it's all metal all of this is uh machined aluminium it feels there isn't any plastic on here i mean even the uh, biathlon um uh essentially um lever over here that that's all metal as well so this is all nice the trigger as well i forgot to talk about that uh that feels like a, obviously a match gray trigger it feels like it's adjustable as well um i think it is from what i've seen of the video over here at the back yes you can adjust it you can rotate it and you can move it up and down which is nice it'd be interesting to see as well can can you adjust the trigger to adjust the the pull on the first and or second stage let's see as we progress forward, we've got the actual barrel itself. Uh, there's some air slots over here. And there is, just at the back end over here, just very quickly, the a thread over here. So you can, sorry, protector, thread protector, so we can take this off. And you can put a half inch you went off on here. It did take a lot of time when I took this off at the, to the shop. Yeah, there you go. And, the, and I know there's a lot of oil on the end, so from my perspective i think this is going to need a good clean let's just put that back on let's quick look at the other side of the rifle starting at the back again the adjuster over here butt pad where you load the magazine over here just take a look again it's got some weight to it as i mentioned which to be fair it feels really nice it feels really nice now, I'm just basically going to cock and do a dry fire. So there is essentially, when you pull the, the bath on lever, there is a half stage over here, which stops. And then essentially a final pull and then close. And when you close it, you can feel there's uh, some rigidity there. It's not as smooth as some of the other rifles I've got, but it is still smooth. Don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not as 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 real firm as some of the other rifles i've had i mean i've i've had a an rti profit and i know when i when i uh had that 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 was one of the most um uh rigid cocking levers i've used and one of the most smoothest ones i've got is on my vulcan 2 that that's smooth as butter um and don't get me wrong this this isn't 
this isn't bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's 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 definitely got some stages to it. Um, and let's fire it. Oh yes, of course. I've got to get used to this uh, safety. So it's in safe now. It's in fire mode now. Oops. See straight away that can be um, bumped into by accident. And then here we go. It's pretty loud. Okay, so you're gonna need to get a silencer on there and a decent silencer that is back in safe mode. Uh, let's just cock it again and fire it again. Let's do it one action. See, that's not bad, but when you push it back, you can feel there's some rigidity there. And then let's put it in, in fire mode. There we go. And then let's fire it. So yeah, straight away, it's loud. It's loud. It could do with a, a silencer. But on the whole, my first impressions of this rifle are very, very positive. It feels nice to hold it when I uh, had a look at it in Cheshire Gun Rooms, which, by the way, I forgot to say thank you very much to Sam and Reese who looked after me today, as well as hi to John and Paul. Ultimately, when I was there and shouldering the rifle, it felt really nice. I, to be fair, it felt very, very similar to holding a Delta Wolf into the shoulder and also an FX Impact, um, obviously, without all of the peripherals I've got on those. And what I want to do, as I mentioned, is take this and see when I put one of my scopes on it. I've got a choice now of a couple of scopes. Um, I've got a couple of vector optics I'm going to consider putting on here, either Veyron 6 24 by 44 or one of my Marksman's. Again, similar uh, magnification. I've also got coming, fingers crossed, um, a Hawk, which is slightly more powerful in terms of magnification, but I'm, I'm very keen to see what this can do at, again, the, the, the accessible yardage that I can get. So it, see how it compares to something like the Delta Wolf or even the FX Impact, because they're, they're, they're premium products. And this is price-wise is, is nowhere near in the same league, but whether or not it can do the same thing, who knows? And again, I've I've heard some good things. And from my experience of owning the Rex of X Mito, which is a regulated pistol, I think, you know, for, for what you get in that package, it's fantastic. I'm, I've got high hopes for this. And I will be doing a follow up for definite on this to see how this fares against the other two. So that is my quick overview video on the Rex Imex Ixia. If you've liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe and once again, thank you very much for all your support and your comments and keep tuned to the channel and I will be following up with an, an update on this Ixia very, very soon. Once again, thank you very much. Take care, stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Thank you.